today, I thought I would take you through my bird photography Photoshop workflow, show you how I edit my bird photos. And it's not very technical. I don't do a lot to my bird photos because I like them to look really natural. So if that's something that you're into as well, don't go away. If this is your first time seeing me, I'm Barry Callister of Photographer's Freedom, taking you from beginner to better to business. Here on my YouTube channel and over at photographersfreedom.com, you will find photography basics tutorials, camera gear reviews, photography business advice, and more that is all aimed to help you no matter where you might be in your photography journey. Please subscribe to my channel if you like the sound of that and ding the notification bell. Right now, let's jump onto the computer and I'll show you how I edit my bird photos. Now looking at this screenshot, you're probably freaking out saying, whoa, whoa, hang on a minute. This video is called Bird Photography Photoshop Workflow and you're in Lightroom. Yes, I generally start my edits in Lightroom, but if you don't have Lightroom, don't freak out because you can do any of what I'm about to do in the Camera Raw plugin. So I'll show you how to do that a bit later. Um, now I've been taking a lot of photos lately of birds, um, black, uh, white-bellied sea eagles, uh, cormorants and so many other things, some gannets. I had a great experience the other day at Woolgooga Headland in on the mid north coast of New South Wales, here where I live. <coughs> Excuse me. I watched some gannets feeding quite close to shore and got some great shots. The other day I went out there to the headland and I came across this cormorant grooming on a rock just offshore and I sat and I watched it for a little bit. So, what I'm going to do is edit this photo here. Now the first thing I'll generally do starting in the develop module is when I look at this photo the first thing I see is that the highlights are too bright because you've got no detail in the feathers here on the side of the face and on the neck of the bird. So we'll deal with that in a second but the first thing that I will do is go to the profile and I'll click on that and I will go down to browse and into the camera matching profiles and I will click standard. I generally use standard, sometimes I'll leave it at Adobe Raw, it just depends on the look of the shot itself as to whether or not I'll change that. But generally I will use standard. Now first thing I'll see here is the exposure of this shot is a tiny bit underexposed but it's not bad and you've got a lot of dark areas, you've got the dark water back here, you've got the dark bird, the shadows down here, so a lot of this photo is shadow. So I might leave the exposure where it is there, but I'll deal with those highlights by grabbing my highlight slider and dragging that to the left a little so we get more detail in the feathers so you can see before and after we can now see those feathers. I may raise the shadows a little, actually I might boost the exposure here a little bit just maybe up 0.5 there and then of course I will have to bring my highlights down a little bit more bring back a bit more of that detail I might raise the shadows on this one a little <coughs> excuse me bring back the detail in the feathers there a little then what I will do is hold alt or option if you're using a Mac and click on the number area there of the white slider and drag it to the right until I see some dots showing up on the screen. So you can see there, those are bits that, those are parts of the image that are now clipping or uh, losing detail. So you drag it back just until you can't see any more dots on the screen. And for this image, that's going to be right about 17, I would think. Let's say 17. We'll do the same thing with the black slider click. Oh, this is a left click on the number there while holding Alt or Option. Drag it down to the left until you get some dots of black coming showing up or just a tiny, I generally leave this with just a tiny few dots showing and that looks pretty good. At any stage during your edit, press the backslash key to view the before and then the after, before and after. So you can see already we've got that looking a lot better. We've got detail in the feathers there you've got more detail popping out on these black feathers it's looking pretty good we're almost done <clears throat> with what i will do in lightroom 
Um, I will play with the texture slider a little sometimes, but I don't overdo it because I don't like the look of it. If you crank it right up, that is just not a natural look. So generally we'll leave it around about between 10 and 20 normally. I'm going to say I'll uh, leave it at about 11. For that, I'll just click over here back in the history for the texture and see what it looks like for after. That's very subtle. I kind of like that. Clarity, I generally don't use. I don't like the way it makes an image look. Dehaze, I will only use if there is haze in the image and we don't have any here. I will boost the vibrance though by left clicking on the numbers and dragging that up to about maybe 10. I don't like to overdo this again. Over here again, we'll, on the history, we'll look at the before that and the after. That kind of pops the color of the rocks a bit more. I kind of like that. Now, one thing I will do at the moment in uh, Lightroom Classic, this is Lightroom Classic, by the way, is uh, I will use the color grading tool a lot. This is only because I understand the color grading tool because I do a lot of video color grading for my YouTube channel here. And uh, so I understand how to use this. And it's a great addition to Lightroom. I absolutely love it. So what I will do is I'll grab the eyedropper tool here, the white balance selector in the basic panel, click on that and we'll zoom in. This is just to make sure my colors are balanced and correct. So I'll hover it over the white feathers there or the feathers that should be white, you would think. And you can see the values there. They are roughly within two or three numbers of each other. The reds are 95.3, the greens are 94.6 and the blues are 92.6. So they're generally within two or three values of each other. That is okay. If you see a, a big swing between them, then you've got a bit of a problem. Let's just, oh God, I'm not really using my keyboard very well today. Uh, we'll grab the eyedropper again and go to this black area. This should be fairly black. And you can see we've got 1.92 and 3.9. So to me, the blues are a little bit too high. So what I'll do is I'm going to leave the eyedropper selected there. I'm going to go to the color grading tab here. Open that out. I'm going to click on shadows because this is what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with the darker part of the image. And I'm just going to pull it away from blue a little bit there. And you'll see if you hover the eyedropper over, we've now got the values a little bit closer together. And you can, if you want it further away, you just drag that saturation slider up to drag it more towards the orangey area there, but I don't want to overdo it. So we'll just, because it's also, you can also change the hue slider here. You can drag this to the left or to the right to get a better balance. So I'm gonna, that's pretty good. I like that, they're very close together. So I'm going to leave it at that. Pop my eyedropper back, Click left click there. So that is all that I am going to do to this image here in Lightroom, that's it. We'll hit the backslash key, see the before and the after, before, after. So the colors are much better balanced. We've got detail in the feathers and our blacks and white values are pretty, pretty spot on. So now what I will do is I will right click on this image, go down to edit in and then across to edit in Adobe Photoshop 2021. So that will scoot it across to Photoshop for me. So we'll go to Photoshop finally <laughs> and have a look. Uh, if my computer will catch up, it's running very slow today. There we go. Okay. First thing we always do in Photoshop is duplicate the background layer. So I'll click on that left click, drag it down to the little plus icon there and let go. That copies our background layer so that we're not working on the original. And it also makes it easier to see before and afters later. So all I do here in Lightroom is noise reduction and sharpening pretty, gen pretty much generally. And then maybe apply a vignette if I think the photo needs it. So I'll go up here to the filters menu, down to my Topaz Labs filters, and I'll click Denoise AI. Now, if you don't 
If you're not familiar with Denoise AI, it's a fantastic noise reduction plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom Classic, and it works amazingly well, has fabulous AI technology. As you can see, it's automatically removed all the noise from that image and sharpened the details as well, and it looks pretty good. So I'm just going to click apply. If you're interested in Topaz Denoise, I've put a link in the video description. You can try it free for 30 days, so you've got nothing to lose, really. So there's our noise reduction done. The reason I do noise reduction first is because when you apply other filters, like sharpening, for example, it makes noise. It introduces noise because it accentuates the noise that you already have. So. I like to do the noise reduction first, get all that noise out of the way, and then I can do my sharpening or whatever else I want to do without adding more noise. So I've duplicated my background layer again. I'll go back up to the filter menu, down to sharpen and unsharp mask is one of my favorite, pardon, favorite sharpening tools to use in Photoshop there. I'm pressing control plus there to zoom in, command plus if you're on a Mac and the space bar to left click and move around. Now because Topaz Denoise AI has already applied some sharpening, I'm not going to apply too much here. So I'm just clicking on my preview button here to turn it on and off just to see what I'm doing here. 49 is a little bit too subtle. I'm gonna go up to maybe about close to 60 here. 60 looks okay for this image. It's not the sharpest photo in the first place. So we'll zoom back out, just turn that off and back on. That's made a bit of a difference to the rocks, the final lines, the rocks here and the, bird, and the lines on the bird's feathers. So that's pretty good. Now what I will do to draw the viewer's attention into the bird is apply a vignette. Now the way I do this, there's many ways you can apply vignettes in Photoshop, but the way I do it is um, get the elliptical marquee tool up here make sure it's selected as the elliptical marquee tool and not the rectangular or any of the others and left click and drag an ellipse around the bird there i'll just center it on the image for this particular photo if photoshop will show me where the center is it normally there we go now what I do is come down here to the new the adjustments layer icon down here, click on this, and we just apply a curves layer here. So when I click on that, it'll automatically take that selection I had and make a mask on this layer. What we do now is click the center of the graph here and drag it down. You can see I'm creating darker section of the image there, and of course it's in the center of the image, not around the outside, which is where we want a vignette. So what we do is make sure that the mask is selected over here. Click Control I or Command I on a PC. That will invert your mask. And then what you want to do is come up here to the filter menu, down to Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I use a value of around 366. And you can see that blurs out the uh, vignette and makes it a lot more subtle from the outside to the inside, a much better blend. So that's before the blur, that's after the blur, click OK. Now sometimes zooming out on your image can help you to see the result of the vignette a bit better. I think it's a little bit strong, so I'm going to just turn down the opacity here. So I'm just going to back the opacity off and just watch my image and see what happens. And this is before, after, that's pretty good. What I will generally do then sometimes is duplicate this layer. So we're duplicating the curves layer. And then you want to invert that, Control or Command I. Then double click on the thumbnail there, double clicking, and drag this one up. So it's brightening up the center of the image and accentuating the star of our photo, which is the cormorant. So before and after, that's a little bit too much, I think. I'm going to drag it back a smidge. 
There we go, that looks pretty good. And I'll just turn both of those off to see the before the vignette, after the vignette. You can now see that your eye is drawn to the bird because the outside of your image is a bit darker and the inside is much brighter. And that, my friends, is a finished image. That is pretty much all I will do to a bird image. And the last thing that I do is right click on the background layer and click select flatten image. All this does is it squishes all the layers together. It merges them all together. And when you export the file, it's just exporting that one layer and not all of the layers, which makes a bigger file. So it's just space saving. It's a space saving thing. And I close this out and that will automatically reopen it into Lightroom as a TIFF file, as you can see here. And this is our before shot. This is our after shot. You can see it still looks natural, got a lot more detail and a lot less noise and I'm pretty happy with that. So what I will then do is come up to my file menu here, click export and I've got a lot of export presets saved over here and I've got one for Facebook so I'll click on that. That saves it out to a specific folder on my desktop and I rename it. We'll name it Australian Birds Cormorant. We'll do for now. And make sure all my other settings are fine. I will come down here to the watermark and select a watermark that's sort of in the bottom left hand corner. I think black. That's good. That will export it out to this file here on my desktop. And then what I do is find it. First of all, where is it? Is it, there it is, there we go. And I will drag it back into Photoshop, up to the top, let go, and it'll open it in Photoshop. And then I have in here on my, under my actions, I have a Facebook sizing and export action. This here, if I just select that and then I just click play, that sizes it to 20. I'll open the action here so you can see what it's doing. So it's changing the image size to a width of 2048 pixels which retains the sharpness of the image and makes it look really good in Photoshop it, it sort of it's a way of getting around the Photoshop compression a little bit so that you, it doesn't compress your image and make it look terrible they still look really good on Photoshop and what that has also done is that action has also saved it back out to the folder it was originally in so I just close out of that and that is my bird photography Photoshop workflow. Now, if you were to do all of that stuff that I did to this image in uh, using Adobe Camera Raw, I just, I'll click on the original, click edit in Photoshop and just quickly show you how you could do this. We'll duplicate the background layer and we'll go up to the filters menu go camera raw filter and you can see in here that we can do pretty much all the other things that I did with it in Lightroom right here okay you've got your detail you've got your color grading you know um, camera raw and Lightroom are very very similar so you can do everything that I did with that in here in your camera raw and then so we'll just, I'll quickly run through it. So I did a little bit of a, I think I took it up to about 0.5 on there, roughly there. And we'll drag the highlights down a bit. Shadows I boosted a little bit. Whites, you can do the Alt or Option trick in here too. Hold Alt or Option. Click on the word whites and drag it up until you clipped and then drag it back. Blacks, same thing, dragging it down. That'll do. And then I added a little bit of texture, added a little bit of vibrance. And I did the color grading, but I won't worry about that. All you do then is click OK and it'll open it in there with the camera raw filter on it. So you can see the before and after. And then just do all the other steps that I did here in Photoshop. 
So that's how I edit my bird photos in Photoshop and Lightroom. As you can see, not too technical. I can have a bird photo edited and up on Facebook or my website within five or 10 minutes, and they look the way nature intended them to. So if you got value out of this video, please hit the like button. If you are not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so and ding the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I release a new video. If you're interested in Topaz Denoise AI, there is that link down there in the video description. Check that out. You can try it free for 30 days. What have you got to lose? Until next time, I'm Barry Callister, Photographer's Freedom. Get out there, take some wicked shots. I'll see you soon.